Yeah, hello YouTube, um, Joel Harvey here. Just thought I'd uh, show you my new jet engine. I have a brand new, well, fully rebuilt 360 degree uh, thrust bearing, um, brand new turbine, brand new compressor. Um, I've got a, a picture of me actually running this engine with a slightly different configuration. So this is uh, the new configuration I've got now. As you can see, it goes straight into the side of the combustion chamber instead of having the old-fashioned tube out in up to the top. It just cuts out a lot of a lot of extra mess. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to give you a couple of secrets uh, in my film. Uh, one of my secrets uh, that everybody should who's running on gas. If you see here, that's my gas nozzle. And if you've noticed, the problem that people have, which you'll see in one of my other videos when I upload it, is that the gas shoots straight down the combustion chamber. And you get the hot spot right here in the combustion chamber. What you want is the heat or the hot spot here. Okay, you want everything combusted up here, this half of the, the chamber. So what will happen is you've got your primary holes, your secondary holes, which is your sus sustain holes. So the first half of your com combustion tube is where your uh, combustion should happen. Okay, we'll give that a bit of a, bit of a whack in there. Okay, so this, this bolts in and yeah, away you go. Now I've got myself a, a little, uh, little igniter here. I don't know if you can see the little spark there. Um, that ignites the flame in the combustion tube, combustion chamber. Um, now, uh, issues that people have is they don't put the right holes in. Now, what you need to do is calculate what your com what, how big your compressor is. And then go to an application called Jet Specs. Now, Jet Specs, um, you type in the size of your compressor wheel, and it spits out pretty much numbers for you: um, how big the holes are, how many, and approximately where to put them on on the combustion chamber. So let's let's just run through things, some some things, okay? Now I've got some electronics here that I'm um, going to introduce: lithium polymer battery, 5,000 milliamp hours, which is is good. Um, I have a brushless motor for a starter. I've managed to find some Bendix clutches that will that should fit on that. Um, so I've got a, a nice brushless motor to get, get going with. Um, so I'm gonna now this is uh, simulated for the oil pump. It's actually switched on at the moment, so I can turn that up with the uh, voltage controller. So the old way, um, how I was regulating the, the, the oil was a bypass valve. I was turning the bypass valve. That shouldn't even be in there. That should be, that's just, I don't know what, that's the oil temperature probe. So I've got one oil temperature probe that, that goes in down here, if you can see into the oil. Um, and I'll have a, a temperature probe going into the combustion chamber, which will be this, this little uh, jig here. It's all stainless steel, all ordered off eBay, and that'll go into the side there. Okay, so, um, yep, I've also got my oil pump underneath. So I've got the best oil flow into the oil pump. Now, that's a power steering. I don't know if you can see that very well, but that's a power steering pump. What I've done, and you can't see that very well at all, but you might be able to see the, the drill, drill motor just down in there. Um, you can't see very well on the camera but uh, I've got a bypass coming out at the moment I'm going to take that bypass off and just run the voltage control um, the voltage control on the oil pressure so if it drops I can turn it up that way later on I can rig up something with the the, the oil pressure regulator or the oil pressure sensor for the digital gauge that I've got here so I've got oil, oil digital, uh, voltage digital and a uh, boost gauge. I thought boost is good because what you have is you have the the uh, the, the old-fashioned ones. They fluctuate. 
um, you know, they pulsate and fluctuate. These have uh, sampling, so they sample every every couple of couple of seconds. So it, it'll sample and it'll average it out. Um, some great temperature gauges here. 999, I think. Where's this one here? Right here. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, we'll turn it back up that way so you can see it. Um, it's a K-type temperature probe, and they read up to 999 degrees Celsius. If your jet gets any hotter than uh, 700 degrees, especially a turbine this size, it's too hot. Uh, if your oil gets above 100 degrees, again, too hot. So um, I'll give you a, a look at what I've done. Now I've got an e ECU here. Is it an ECU? Uh, I, f I forgot what they call them. Um, but it's a power unit that drives the three phase into the brushless motor. Now a lot of people have problems as to how to drive these brushless motors. What I have done is I've got onto, got onto eBay and I have bought, I've taken the cover off it, I've bought a, a survey tester. Now what you do is you plug the, where you plug your um, servo, uh, sorry, your um, receiver in, you basically plug in your servo tester. So you've got the battery connected. I've just got a jumper leader there at the moment because I'm still working out some of the some of the kinks. That's the oil pump. So if I turn the, the oil pump up and down with the DC regulated voltage, there, it's pulse width modulated. So all these little modules you can buy on eBay, which is which is awesome, come straight from China. Okay, so um, I'll give you a look at uh, how how it all operates. Now I'm going to switch this. So I'm going to have it, have a switch down here. So what I've done is I've got the wiring loom. That all goes on the actual jet itself. This all goes up into a console. Um, I've connected all of this into a board um, just here. I've got brought all the plugs. The plugs are relatively cheap on eBay. So it all plugs into the one. Oh, that's a bit messy on the back there. Um, when I was testing, I think I burnt a few of the rails off. And I forgot to uh, reinforce the solder with the, the rails. Um, so what have we got here? Okay, now I have no... So I'm going to switch that on. Okay, which... This is actually a programmable. So I actually got a, uh, a card to program it as well. So um, Skyfly I think it is, or it's a Skyfly copy. Um, the three phase motor, or the uh, brushless motor. And away we go. These are extremely, uh, like I can hit the brake on it, but I've actually taken the reverse and programmed it without the reverse. Um, so it's got a cooling fan on there, which I don't think you need it. Um, so I crank that up, crank up the oil pump. So the oil pump will probably sit about one third. Okay, so we'll turn that down. I don't want to make this video too long, otherwise it just gets too bloody boring. So I'm going to um, turn that down. So that's for the starter motor. So I'm going to have a Bendix clutch. Um, I might be actually starting to sell the Bendix clutches because I've found a place to get them cheap. Um, and uh, and move them on for a bit of a bit of a profit. There's a bit of soldering stuff here everywhere. Um, so it's, it's coming along good. The whole console is going to be great. Um, what I'm hoping to do with my jet, I'm going to switch that off right now. So I've got to switch that switch off the whole lot. Everything switches off. What I want to do with my jet is I want to put a. I've got a larger turbine. Uh, a larger turbo that'll sit in here okay now the turbo will this is the gas producer so this will produce the pressure um, out of the end there now that pressure will then be fed will then be fed into a turbine which is basically half a turbo um, I'll see if I can I'll see if I can find it I oh, know it's not here at the moment no, I can't find it at the moment. But um, look, a lot of people too, you have to run 60 pounds into your turbo. When you're running a turbo jet, there is a huge amount of pressure um, and it's continuous pressure. It's not a fluctuating pressure like in a car. It's a continuous thrust. So you, a lot of people say, oh, I'll run about uh, 40 or 50 pounds 
I've even seen some um, backyard mechanics sort of, oh, yeah, we'll stick a funnel in there and away we go. You've got to think of the, the poundage, the pressure that is actually pushing on the bearings inside. They're not, they're not ball bearings. They are what they call a wet bearing. So you need to keep the pressure up to the wet bearing. Even if it's running for a couple of seconds without oil, that's enough to destroy the turbo and un unbalance it. Now, the reason uh, this failed in another photo, another video that I'm going to put up, uh, turbo failing, um, is because where I took it to get balanced here in Melbourne, they didn't balance the turbine properly. Now, it threw the nut off. Well, now what happens when this turbine turns, it's actually self-tightening because the pressure's on that side, it tightens the nut. So the, the mechanic, so what, what actually happened is it hit a harmonic resonance within the gyroscope, okay, when the gyroscopics within the, the uh, mechanical um, movement of the spinning assembly, hits its resonance, it actually shakes it off in a gyroscopic action. Kind of like when you, uh, you know, you spin a... You, it's, it's very hard to explain. It's, basically what happens is the harmonics hits the nut and the nut vibrates off and uh, loosens it. So luckily it wasn't um, fully detrimental to the turbo, but it was detrimental enough to have to rebuild the whole, whole turbo um, and get a new turbine. It, it was a ceramic turbo, uh, ceramic turbine. I replaced it with a steel turbine. So um, let's see if I can get in there. there there's the uh, the motor and drill. I got a boss onto the um, and I've got a uh, cooling fan on the back there just to keep some of the heat off. Um, that's heat shield to stop the, uh, cause that's where that's going, to stop the heat radiating into the oil. I've got the radiator here. Um, and, and believe it or not, that's not a computer fan. That's a, um, this was actually pulled out of an old medical laser. Um, that is a medical laser. Um, radiator, well, it's, it's a general um, uh, industrial um, radiator um, for, for cooling like um, oil or Anyway, that's an industrial fan. It's, it's a high-speed 12-volt fan. I haven't managed to find another one to fit into the second space there. If I can, I will. These are fuel pumps. Uh, fuel, sorry, not fuel pumps. They are fuel filters. Fuel filters are fine. They take the pressure and uh, just the, the, the amount. It'll take the amount of oil that goes through there. Just make sure you got them around the right way. You need a, you need a good filter in there to keep the crap out of the bearings. One little bit of crap in your in your bearings is enough to stuff your turbo. One little bit of vibration is enough to stuff your turbo. Yes, I have a a um, gasless MIG welder, which is not good. So I couldn't get that to seal. I got some muffler putty, stuck it around it. Didn't like the look of that one. It looked all right. It looked okay, but I thought, you know, what the heck? I'll just stick a bit of muffler putty around there. Now this is a test stand. Um, again, look, you know, why, why do people go overboard with the thickness of steel? We're not running a vehicle, we're not running a motor car that's going to last or run for hours and hours at a time. Although this, this, this one here will run for a, a quite a substantial time. It's going to be on a, a motorbike. So anyway, as I was saying before, the, this is the gas producer, runs into another turbine, it's going to run onto a gearbox built onto the side of that turbo. Um, what else can I say? Um, that's all I can say at the moment. Uh, the actuator, I'm gonna, instead of welding that shut, which will destroy your turbo, I still wanna have options later if I wanna, you know, use the housing for another turbo or, you know. So what I'll do is I'll just, um, I'll weld, I'll probably weld something on there and a bolt. So you can just bolt it closed with the, the, the actuator. So, um, all right, I'm running out of time with the video. Please, thumbs up subscribe comment any ideas guys um, you know I've given you all this information especially about the fuel so do me a favor thumbs up and subscribe um, and if you can do that for me then I can 
give you more information. I can, um, you know, help you guys out a bit more so you can get these turbos running and turbines running um, without costing you a whole heap of money. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. <laughs>